I've been telling you these last few weeks, keep an eye on the Seattle Seahawks backfield because there's been a lot of changes. There have been some injuries throughout the season and the offseason and last season that kept cropping up with these running backs. The reason why the Seattle Seahawks kept drafting running backs is due to the fragility rate at the running back position. And now it's happening again. Kenneth Walker's on the mend right now with an oblique injury. And now everybody's running to the waiver wire to get Zach Charbonnet. Most people who watch this channel already picked him up as a stash. And we've been saying he's a stash and nothing more. Just in case the worst happened. And it did. It could be much worse. It could be a season ender. Looks like this could put him on the mend for a little bit. But again, we now have to analyze Zach Charbonnet to see whether or not you need him for fantasy football. Well, what you need to do right now, click that subscribe button. Tap it with the finger on your phone. Click it with the mouse on your computer. We go deep on the waiver wire every single day here. We cover multiple players. We deep dive players, everything else. Also help you set your lineups, help you get those trades done. And whatever else you need for your fantasy football team. Ric Flair's watching you. Do not disappoint him. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I do not want to see Ric Flair sad anymore. That being said, let's dig into Zach Charbonnet, Kenneth Walker, and company. And Kenneth Walker's on the mend with an oblique injury. I do not know how long he's going to be out. He's not in consideration for IR. So this could be day-to-day, week-to-week, maybe a little longer. Who knows? I guess they're going to have to get more testing done. They're going to have to feel things out. And a lot of this news came out on Monday. It's now Tuesday midday. So considering the timing of how I'm filming this video out right now, we'll probably get some more information by the time I produce this video and you watch it. We'll probably get more on Kenneth Walker. That being said, he's doubtful right now. More than likely not going to be playing this week. But again, we have to be looking at Zach Charbonnet. He's the next man up. Saw a huge opportunity share once Kenneth Walker was out of the fold here. Got some touches, got some targets out of this backfield. Targeted six times. 15 carries. Almost 13 PPR fantasy points. So he's going to be getting a lot of workload with Kenneth Walker out. That being said, do you still need Zach Charbonnet on your fantasy team? You're going to make your decision today after going through these numbers here. But here's the PPR fantasy production by week on this chart from Rotoviz. Really has not been productive all season long. Things are starting to ramp up just a little bit. He was an RB2 last week in week 11 due to the volume. And volume is important for running backs because even in bad matchups, if you're getting enough touches, you might be able to hit those high-end RB3, low-end RB2 numbers which is good enough to get you by if everything else hits on your fantasy team. Plus, if you're scraping by at running back, maybe that's something you need anyways, depending on your situations. And the opportunities were very low throughout the season because Kenneth Walker's a dog. He is a very good running back. We're not against Kenneth Walker here. If not, we're pro Kenneth Walker because he's got speed, he's electric. We talked about him throughout his days at Michigan State. A lot of his family members, he even contacted the channel a few times to talk about Kenneth Walker in the comments when we were talking about him during draft season, during his time at Michigan State, going over his film. But the opportunities are racking up here with him out. 21 opportunities in Week 11. Expect something like that for Zach Charbonnet going forward. Expect him to see a lot of targets. Expect for him to see a lot of targets touches there is a name that i'm going to talk about who could eat some of these targets but he's making his debut this week and it might be a slow ramp up and that's kenny mcintosh pay attention to him and i will have a video out on kenny mcintosh tomorrow but zach charbonnet interesting collegiate profile first freshman running back to ever produce 10 or more touchdowns at michigan ever broke out as a freshman 2020 happened did not go so well transferred out to UCLA, balled out over a 1,000 yards instantly, stayed his senior year. We questioned that move because he could have went out for the draft that year, probably would have got decent draft capital, but still, he improved on his receiving production. He mentioned that was one of the reasons why he stayed in college. He wanted to get better as a pass catcher 
out of backfield. You see that in his yards after the catch per reception at 10.4 during his final season. That means he can get you yak when he gets the ball in his hands. And it's not like he's a 4-3 guy. He's a bigger running back, and he can still get you some yards in the open field, which is pretty cool to see. And also, average 4.15 yards after contact per attempt. 3.54 on his career, so he can also bang it between the tackles, keep rumbling, and get you some extra yardage, and is good in the passing game. So this is a running back that you can feature as a workhorse if you need him to, because you can. He's got the size to get it done between the tackles, and he can catch the ball in the backfield, which could equate to a lot of fantasy production in the right moments in the right matchups and that's what we're looking at here he got drafted in the second round of this year's draft the thing about that is Seattle did not need to do that they did not need to draft him in the second round this was a deep running back class you could have waited till third fourth fifth or even wait for the UDFAs to get you a decent running back but they decided to pull the trigger on Zach Charbonnet in the second round after spending a second round pick on Kenneth Walker last year that means they liked him they liked him a lot because they already had the sunk cost invested in Kenneth Walker, and now they're drafting Zach Charbonnet. They wanted that one-two punch. They've also dealt with a lot of injuries at running back over the years, so they wanted to make sure they were stable as they went into the back end of the season this year, and that's why they spent a second-round pick on Zach Charbonnet. So when if something does happen to your main running back or one of the running backs, they got another fall piece, and it's Zach Charbonnet, 4-5-3, 40-yard dash, decent size adjusted speed score, decent burst score, decent athlete, good size, good enough to get the job done, catch the ball in the backfield, can run it between the tackles. He can really do everything you want him to do. Good in pass protection, at least Pete Carroll says so. We see it in numbers as well. Touches since week eight. It's been creeping up for Zach Charbonnet. He has been out snapping Kenneth Walker, partly due to game script. They like to use him more in passing scenarios since he's a better receiving threat, catching balls out of backfield. Kenneth Walker was dealing with a calf issue a few weeks ago. They already had another running back, so they really limited his opportunities and touches. But still, Zach Charbonnet was adding on to the snaps, adding on to the touches. Now Kenneth Walker's out. Now we get to see what Zach Charbonnet show is going to look like. We're going to see what's going to happen with Zach Charbonnet. The question is the schedule. It is a horrible schedule for running backs going forward, at least for the next three weeks, four, five. This is probably the worst running back schedule in all of football. You got the Niners, you got the Cowboys, you got the Niners. You got Philly, which is a pass funnel. You got Tennessee Titans, another pass funnel, which might be all right for Zach Charbonnet. Then you got Pittsburgh, but you got to make it that far in the fantasy playoffs to get there. You got the Niners, Cowboys, Niners. You may neglect to pick them up due to that, but you may want to pick them up because you just need touches at the running back position whatsoever. So he does have some upside due to the touches, but he has a lot of downside. That makes him a lottery ticket over these next couple weeks because these are some nasty matchups you got to think about. Running backs can score fantasy points on these teams, the fact that Zach Charbonnet can catch the ball in the backfield, that might add some opportunity for him to score fantasy points. But again, you're not trusting it. You may not put him in your lineup. You're really going to have to scratch your head here. And honestly, if you don't feel good about it, you may want to go the other way. But it's up in the air. You're just going to have to take the guess, take the gamble, see what happens in these matchups. But if you're starting Zach Charbonnet, you really need him anyways at the running back position. That's what's happening there. And really, let me know in the comments below if you're going to be starting him during weeks 12, 13, and 14 during the murderer's row of rush defenses he's going to be going up against. But you need him because you need a potential workhorse, even though he's going up against bad matchups. You need those touches. You need him. You need a running back who's getting 10, 15, 20 touches in a game. Because that equates to some fantasy production. Maybe enough to get you by. Maybe you can tap into some upside. But right now you're hurting. People are getting hurt by bye weeks. People are getting hurt by injuries. And you know what? You got to latch on to that. You got to do it. You got to do what you got to do to get to the next week so you can get to your matchup here. And he can help you in your lineup. You don't need him because you don't need that. You got good running backs. You don't want to deal with those matchups. You may want to pick them up. So somebody else in your league doesn't get him, so they can't play the matchups with him. If you got a roster spot, 
but that's not ideal if for strategic purposes if you don't have the roster spot. So don't do it unless you can. But still, Zach Charbonnet is walking into some opportunity here that could lend to him being a good fantasy contributor over these next few weeks and catch ball in the backfield. So some of these bad matchups might be okay if the game script rolls his way where he can catch a few balls, maybe cross the goal line here and there. It could be okay for him. It could be, but he's going to be a lottery ticket. A lot of people who watch my videos, when I say a player's a lottery ticket, means it could go either way. It means it could be up and down. And that's not me being wishy-washy. That's me telling the truth. I said that about Keaton Mitchell last week. I say that about a lot of players because a lot of players are lottery tickets. A lot of players are not locks because only a few players in the league are locks. And when you're seeing a bad matchup like this in front of you, you got Niners, Cowboys, Niners, that makes sense. It makes sense. But let me know in the comments below what you think about Zach Charbonnet. I want to hear about it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out. Rick Flair's watching. You don't disappoint him. It's Thanksgiving. Make him happy. I want to thank you for watching, though. I'll catch you on the next video.